The next RNA virus group is picornoviruses. Okay, so what about picornoviruses? The shortcut. What are the viruses which is coming under picorno? The name itself has P. Okay, that is P corno. P okay. P E E P C O R N E. P corno. Okay, instead of P I, you make it P. Okay, P. Okay. Now, what is P stands for? First P, you know already. Which one is that? Polio virus. Yes. Polio virus belongs to Picorno virus. Right. And E stands for antero. Antero virus. And the other E stands for echo. E-C-H-O. Echo virus. Right. And then echo, uh, polio will talk. Entero, we're going to talk. Echo virus is basically enterocytopathogenic human orphan virus. It's called. Okay, it's a big name, but yeah, it's important. Uh, it causes hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. Yeah, we'll talk about it also. And CO, CO, any guesses? What is CO? Coxsackie, yes. Cox, uh, Coxsackie, Coxsackie virus, Coxsackie virus. Okay, RN is for Reno virus, Reno virus. Picor, no, and A, A stands for hepatitis A virus, hepatitis A virus, not adeno, not A for adeno or arena. I didn't know, you know, it belongs to DNA group. So don't confuse, okay? Here in Picarno, HS, and also I told you, the question frequently asked, HNA viruses belongs to which family? Picarno. That was a question frequently asked. Repeatedly, I'm saying again and again, I'm repeating. Whereas your hepatitis C virus belongs to which virus? C for choco flavor, choco flavor. So that belongs to Flavi virus, Flavi virus, right? Flavi virus, okay? And then your HEV, HEV belongs to E for EC. E C micro is easy with me. So C is calcivirus. Got it? And then your hepatitis B virus is hep DNA virus. Okay. Once again, once again, I'm repeating it again and again. Hep DNA. Hep D N A D N A virus. Okay. Repeating again and again. So these are the questions frequently asked, and you are not allowed to make mistake in this type of easy questions. Okay. Now, hepatitis A virus, otherwise also called. Uh, uh, intro 72 virus. Okay, remember that. Okay, now let's go to individual virus. Polio virus. Polio virus, you know the serotypes. One, two, three. Okay, now tell me, uh, most common to cause, uh, type one is most common to cause all the epidemics. Epidemic. All the epidemics is caused by type one. Okay, and type two is most, what do you call most? Antigenic. Most antigenic. Do you remember in dengue, we saw something in dengue, the most dangerous one is which one? Type 2. The most dangerous. Type 2 is most dangerous. Okay. That is one question there in dengue. Here, the most antigenic is type 2. Okay. Type 1 is to cause epidemic and type 3 is frequently asked question. What it causes? Vaccine associated poliomyelitis. Okay. Vaccine associated paralytic polio. Okay. So after vaccine, if you get polio, that is usually due to type 3. That question also asked via PP. Okay. Transmission is what? Which route? Polio, pico oral route. Basically, it is it is happening through the pico oral route. It is pico oral. Pico oral route. Damages which part of the spinal cord? It is the sensory neuron or motor neuron. Definitely it is motor neuron, right? So it means motor neurons are present in the Anterior horn. So, anterior horn, motor neurons. So, whatever paralysis they have, they have placid. They have placid descending, of course, descending. It starts from the person eater, right? So, placid descending paralysis is characteristic for polio. Don't forget all our questions, okay? Placid descending paralysis is common for the polio. Whereas your Gullenberry syndrome, that is ascending paralysis. Gullenberry ascending, ascending paralysis. But this one is your uh, polio is descending paralysis. And uh, yeah, we'll talk the rest again soon. Most common route, if you think it's neuronal, it is wrong. The most common route is through blood, that is hematogenous. Hematogenous. The polio spreads inside the body through blood more than the direct spread. So hematogenous route is most common then comparing to your uh, this route. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, that's the question asked. Now, clinical features. So, most of the cases, you know, 90% of cases, it is usually, it is usually what route? Usually it is, usually it is 
asymptomatic. Most it is asymptomatic. Only few, less than one percentage cases, it's become paralytic polio you have. Okay. That's what polio was, you know, almost eliminated. Uh, diagnosis is again LISA and PCR. And the important thing is what? Vaccine. That's what because of vaccine only, you are uh, almost uh, you're going to eradicate it too. So, live attenuated vaccine. Can you tell me which is the vaccine name? It is the oral polio vaccine. Oral polio vaccine. That is OPV. OPV. What is the other name? Sabinasal. If you're saying Sabin, then that is fine. Sabin. Okay. Sabin. Sabin variant. See, that's important because Sabina is alive. Sabina is girl and she is live. So, live vaccine. Take care. Remember, Sabina live vaccine. Killed vaccine. That is that is the killed vaccine one which you have. Other one. Another variant. That is called what? Salk. Salk vaccine. We give IV. Salk vaccine. Right? Injectable. This is injectable. And Salk is dead. So, it's killed. Salk is killed. Okay, K, Sal, killed. Don't forget. Sal is killed. Sabina is alive. Sabin, vaccine. Okay. There is Sabin Pillman diet as well. Sabin is a strain here. There is one more thing called. I use different color pen. It's better. Sabin field man diet test. Sabin Pillman diet test. Where it is coming? One of the parasite has this. That could be a question also. Are you guys saying toxoplasma? You're right. That is toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis. Yeah. The cat is a definite host in this condition. Pregnant ladies are common. So Sabin. Us Sabina ka kya hai? Toxoplasma hai. But for oral polio virus me, polio me, she is for Sabina is live. So live vaccine. You got it? So two things are <coughs> excuse me, important. Right? That's it. This for the polio. That's all. Nothing much. Enterovirus. Enterovirus, then uh, the uh, enterovirus, these. 70, 72, 72 are very important. You can always expect question from here. Okay, what question? What is uh, the 70, 71 and 72? Usually, uh, your questions are asked here. So, 72, you already know. What is that one, 72? You remember? Okay, let's start with 70. 70 is simple. It is the one which is causing hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. H-E-M-O-R-R-H-A-G. Hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. Okay, O is there. So O, O, O. Okay, O hemorrhagic conjunctivitis. What about 71? 71 is the one which causes hand, foot, mouth disease. Hand, foot, mouth disease. I understand what you guys are saying. Hand, foot, mouth disease is usually most commonly it's caused by which one? Your Coxsackie virus. Exactly, Coxsackie virus. Coxsackie A, especially Coxsackie A virus. But 71 also causes. So that could be a question. 72, of course. No way you will forget that is hepatitis A virus. Hepatitis A virus. All are important. There is no way you're going to forget this. You have to remember. Okay. Yes. Next. What is this picture? You can have this picture. All the three pictures together. Hand. You have a hand, foot and mouth with rashes, blisters and sores on it. So what is that? If you have this type of picture, what it should be? What it is? Any idea? What are you guessing? That is right. It's a coxsackie. It's a hand, foot, mouth disease. Hand, foot, mouth disease. All three are affected. So it's a hand, foot, mouth. Caused by which one? Coxsackie A virus. We are going to talk about that. Coxsackie A. So we had Coxsackie A and B too. You can expect these days, you know, there was a, recently there was a uh, attack. I mean, there was a breakdown also. So people might expect a uh, question. The examiners might ask this one. Only. Okay. So what is this causes? Coxsackie A. A for uh, A, Koksaki A, what they cause? Koksaki A, aseptic meningitis. Koksaki A causes aseptic meningitis. B also same, aseptic. Both are causing aseptic meningitis, common one. But Koksaki A specially causes something called what? Herp angina. What's the question? Asked herp angina. Herp angina, A for apple, A for Koksaki virus A, A for herp angina. Okay? A for A, very easy. And B for to B, then there should be something with B. You know that one. What's that? Born hall. Born hall disease. Born hall disease. They call it as, they call this disease as what? Devil's grip. You call it as devil's grip. Devil's grip. 
इतना होता है बॉन वाला मीन देखो जेवल ओके फ्लोरोडाइनिया सो बी फॉर बॉय बी फॉर बॉल बी फॉर बॉन हॉलम विच इज कॉल्ड डेवल स्क्रिप्ट Uh, it's basically a fluorodynia. That means fluoritis, severe fluoritis. So patient has severe fluoritic pain. And of course, hand, foot, mouth syndrome. You know, I told Coxsackie A. That question can be asked in the exam. So don't forget Coxsackie A causes hand, foot, mouth syndrome most commonly by A only. Okay. Yes. So it means hand, foot, mouth. This is caused by many viruses. One I told you just now. We discussed about that was seventy one. And also your Coxsackie A twenty four variant. Apparently has just remember. Okay. Causes it. And now, what's important? What type of paralysis it causes? And uh, of course, your Coxsackie A also causes hemorrhagic conjunctivitis, just like your uh, enterovirus seventy. We just talked about, right? So now, uh, what the important is What type of paralysis? A causes which one, and B causes which one? If you see in alphabetical, A A ke baad B aata hai. Hef Hef ke baad A B C D E F G H I J K L M N M. Yes, yes is afterwards it comes. Okay, that means. Half is first and yes is second. So A for placid paralysis. So A causes the placid paralysis, whereas your B causes the B causes the spastic paralysis. Spastic paralysis. Do you remember which clostridium also causes spastic paralysis? Clostridium tetani. Yes, in clostridium it is a clostridium tetani. What about your this thing? Other other clostridium which causes placid? It's a clostridium botulinum. Like that, so there is one competition in Clostridium for flaccid and spastic. Same way, Coxsackie A and B have a competition. A takes the flaccid and B takes the spastic. If you put in alphabetical order, it's easy, so you'll never make mistake in this question too. Okay, so this all or whatever we discussed now, all are important and commonly asked questions. Okay, question, question, question. Okay, now uh, next is yeah, filoviruses. In filoviruses, we have Ebola, Marburg. Both causes what? Both the diseases, both of them, they are causing the your uh, African hemorrhagic fever. But especially Ebola, we have to uh, look up to Ebola. So what is the shape? The more one of the frequently asked question is Ebola shape. So when you see like this filamentous, so that is filamentous. A B C D E F. So Ebola filamentous, filamentous shape. Okay, filamentous shape. Ebola virus. Of course, rest all you know. The shape is already filamentous. I told you. Then reservoir is the root pad, just like our Nifa virus. If you remember, just before we study, Nifa also had the excuse me, Nifa also had your fruit bed as the reservoir. Question: Transmission is by direct close contact. Uh, the blood secretion, uh, body fluids, these are also other uh, uh, the way how it spreads. So clinical feature is fever, headache, similar. You know nothing uh, specific. Usual symptoms only. No, vomiting, diarrhea, hemorrhages, shock and death in the patient. So, okay, non-specific symptoms. Right. Now, the last one, coronavirus. If we go to coronavirus, uh, you see, the first thing is a the picture they will ask you. So, picture, what do you see here? Already we spoke about it. You see the petal-shaped peplomias. All these things are pe petal-shaped peplomias. Petal-shaped Peplomas. Okay. Corona, the meaning itself is that only petal shaped, flower shaped, right? Okay. Now, uh, again, it's a positive and non segmented RNA. So, uh, we already told what the shape is again. I'm repeating petal shaped, petal shaped peplomas, right? And then classification is mostly alpha and beta group. Uh, alpha, beta, we have in that most all the disease is coming under beta group only. So, we have SARS in 2000, we had SARS CoV, and then we have MERS. COVID, severe acute respiratory distress, uh, here Middle East respiratory distress syndrome, and our present SARS is COVID-2, COVID-2, 2019. Okay, so just for a uh, remember, I don't think so they are going to ask the previous ones, but SARS-CoV-2, this is the present one going on. So reservoir was bad, okay, for your for uh, this thing. Every time there are new, very new things, COVID should be always updated. But now at least this basic you remember, and then when new things comes, We'll update it. Okay. Yeah. Now, what is the surface? Surface, the structure is simply uh, Osman, Osman. Osman gets good. Like ortho guys are having flu, eight pack guys. Like that, for COVID, you remember orphan men. Orphan men. The shortcut is orphan men. So, what are these things stands for? So, men. Men is M. Okay. I'm going to order. Men. M-E-M. 
E N mens orphan orphan mens. Okay, so yes, is the spike protein. I mean, this is the main virulent factor, which is the main virulent factor of COVID spike spike protein. And of course, E is for envelope, and M is for membrane. And of course, the N is the nucleocapsid and ORF is basically non-structural. Okay, so it's not important. Transmission can be droplet or through the contact. Contact to direct or indirect through uh, directly, we know almost all things happen through contact touching here on the surfaces. So that's four mites also. Okay, and what is the receptor? That can be a question. Which is the target receptor? ACE2. Angiotensin converting enzyme 2. You know that one. Okay, that is also another question can be asked. Expected question. Then diagnosis, you know, RT-PCR. What are the two swabs you take? One is the nasopharyngeal. Some cases they're saying one, any one is nasopharyngeal is sufficient, but some places both nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal. We take two swabs, nasopharyngeal, nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal. And then what do you transport in the viral transport media, VTM, viral transport media, All right? That's the liquid media. It will be if you, most of them must have seen it. It will be like a uh, lid like this in a conical shape, conical shape which has the, the cap there. So you take the both the swabs and you put the swabs inside after collecting the sample, put it inside and then break it and close it and do the triple packing and send at two to eight degrees Celsius. Yeah, you should put it in an ice box and then send it to the lab. So in lab, what are you going to do? Three tests we have. If you remember, what are they? You're saying PCR, yes, that's the best. And for a little bit faster to make the diagnosis faster, we, what we can do, we can use CBNAT or TrueNAT. Okay, CBNAT or TrueNAT. Just like uh, your TB also has a same. Okay, it also has CBNAT PCR. So same with COVID also has a real time PCR, CBNAT or TrueNAT. CBNAT is cartridge with TrueNAT is chip, chip based. You get two cells within an hour. Okay. So uh, other indirect methods also we have ELISA, ELISA, which is just for indirect methods, not the best one. Okay. Now, what about the real time artificer? Definitely, it's the gold standard. And what are the genes are detected? We detect all the uh, uh, E gene, N gene, S gene, OR of one. And every time, you know, the mutation comes, new variants are coming. So it keeps on changing. But these are at least basic things you must know. Okay. E gene, N gene, among in, in men's gene, I told men's, right? Men's, orphan men's. Orphan men. So that means you have that's what I stress on this orphan word because you did the gene is detecting or it is detecting the E, N, and S. So we have the gene detection of all these things. And also one of the things is RDPR. RDPR is basically RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So how do you calculate? The load is calculated based on the CT value. So uh, one CT is your CT scan per value. That is different thing. That's radiology part. We also have a CT cyclic threshold. Cyclic threshold means it's the number of cycles we need to amplify. I mean, this one, uh, um, this is a, uh, one virus, right? One COVID virus. So if you want to amplify it, okay? Amplify it into many things. So we go, now there's be cycles. There will be cycles for which, you know, first cycle, second cycle, one cycle, two cycle, to divide it more and more and more like this, right? So what happened? That is to amplify it into multiple nucleic acid detectable level in which to to viral load. So it means within, if you're having more number of more number of viruses or copies, DNA copies in a less cycle, within you know, few cycles, less than let's say less than 29 cycle, less than 29 cycle, less than or equal to 29 cycle, if you're having the maximum copy means your load is very high. That means what? There are more viruses. So the multiplication is so fast. In within short, within few cycles, it has multiplied so much. You understand? Uh, that means the CT is inversely proportional to the viral load. Lesser the CT and more viral load means that the severity is very high. CT value less than 20, 29 in few cycles, more my viral load. That is high. Whereas your uh, 30 and 34 is a low viral load. And it's more than 35, you already say it as negative. So a CT value, each one has its individual, uh, they have separate, separate, but you remember this. Less than 29 means highly viral load, and if it is more than 35, it is negative. This is usual interpretation we give in the COVID case. CBNet versus true net, if we see, this is also, you have only two genes, E gene and RDRP. So what you do first, you do the screening test for E gene. 
If E gene comes negative, you give the negative drug. Happily, say patient because you take the negative drug and go home. But if it comes positive, then what you have to do? We have to do other one. The which one? First, you did the E. E is positive. So immediately after E, what we are going to do? We are going to confirm it with the RDRP. Okay, RDRP. You do the RDRP. And if RDRP positive comes positive, then you give positive. No problem. But if RDRP is coming negative, that is E is positive, E gene is positive, positive. And if RDRP is negative, contraindication, so better confirm it with what? RT PCR. That's it. Very simple. Okay. If E gene is negative, give negative. If E gene is positive and RDRP also is RDRP also is positive, then give positive. But RDRP is negative, but E gene is positive, means that's contradiction. So what do you do? You confirm it with the RT PCR. Very simple. That mentioned. Okay. Then, of course, we have antigen detection test also, immunochromatographic test, that is a card test. Now, for it's helpful for clinicians in the watch. That's it. Okay, so this is the diagnostic part. What about the vaccines? Vaccines, we know. The, the two popular ones is Covaxin or Covishin. Covaxin, the name itself says uh, Bharat Biotech. Bharat Biotech and ICMR are the, uh, uh, the of course, is developed in India. And you keep it to 8 degrees. So, Bar Covaxin is Bharat Biotech. Okay, it's uh, produced by Bharat Biotech and ICMR. Covishield. Covishield is the viral vector vaccine. It's a vector vac vaccine. You remember which vector? Which uh, virus is used as a vector usually? Adenovirus. Adenovirus is usually used as a vector. Okay. So remember, that's also one of the questions for any, most of the vaccination. This is the vector for vaccination. Any, most, you know, all the new upcoming vaccine, the vector is adenovirus only. Covishield, we have an S. Yes, so, So what happened? Covishield, uh, yes, is there. So it means it is uh, the, the Covishield. So again, it is may, uh, uh, Covishield. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just a second. Covishield, uh, Covishield, yes, is there. So that means the Covishield is taken the Serum Institute of India. It's the uh, one who's producing this vaccine, yeah? Okay, now, uh, Covishield, and after Covishield, we have um, Sputnik, and we have um, AstraZeneca, so other vaccines also. So that also, you know, every time new vaccines are coming, that will be updated soon. But overall, these are the things you must know in the COVID virus. Okay, that's all. Thank you so much. This is a, a short class, speaker note. So I'll uh, we'll uh, talk about other topics now soon in the coming classes. Yeah. Thank you so much.